Alright guys, welcome to today's video. Uh, I'm Daniel and I'm going to be taking you through uh, my arsenal for the USBC Open Championships this year. Um, so, this video is part one because I'm going to be talking about the team oil pattern and how that I plan on attacking that with my team. So, I am the only one here that's in Kansas right now that's on my team. Uh, the rest are down in Texas where I'm originally from and they're going to be coming up separately. So I don't have the ability to practice with them, unfortunately, uh, during this time leading up. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's a waste of practice. So instead, uh, I designed two different oil patterns that I'm going to be going over in this two-part series um, where I'm going to be uh, talking about a team oil pattern that I made that's based on previous year's uh, patterns for the team uh, Open champion Championships oil patterns and a doubles and singles pattern that I'll talk about in part two. So be sure to subscribe below uh, to be sure and get notified for whenever part two comes out. Uh, so make sure and subscribe. So, <clears throat> so let's continue on and get into part one here. So today I just practiced on uh, a pattern that I made for the team uh, event to practice on. And I want to preface this with I have no knowledge of anything about the oil patterns that are out there this year. Uh, other than the occasional 300 video that USBC posts that I get to see an insight of oh well that's what, how they were playing the lanes just like everybody else can do on, on Facebook or Twitter uh, you can feel free to look at those and follow me on Twitter while you're at it at Floppy Penguin but that's besides the point uh, so I went back and I looked all the way back to 2016 all the way to 2021 and looked at the patterns and kind of found some consistencies between them that I decided to make an oil pattern out of for the team event and for doubles and singles same way. So uh, for the team event pattern today specifically, we're gonna be talking uh, about surface. Surface is very, very important, especially whenever you're bowling in the team event because that's a real time that you get to break down the lane in practice with your teammates. Um, so you know this year, unlike last year, there will be uh, 10 people on a pair, five per lane, and <clears throat> last year, it was only five per pair. Feel free to check out my vlog from last year's Open Championships up in the corner right now. So, surface is very important because you can break down the lane as a team and try to break down that right side, that gutter, or, or if you're a left-hander, the left side. You know, uh, you want to break down as far right as you can because that's where you'll want to play for the first game or so, usually, uh, especially in South Point. South Point, for some reason, the topography there and the lane surface, just all of the factors have combined really well for the gutter there. That's just a characteristic of the bowling center. So that's really good because I love to play the gutter. And <clears throat> so starting out, I'm going to show you some shots of me breaking down this pattern today that I just did earlier. I just finished practicing on it. I originally made one pattern and I modified it and bowled on the modified version today and I really like how that I, how that it played today. So as you can see I'm breaking down the right side of the oil pattern right now towards the gutter just throwing my Venom Shock that has 500 on it to break down and take away some of that oil um, so that it can create some more hook out there to the right. And what this does is allows you to play in a similar area or maybe just a hair left of that if your rev rate's a little higher and get the ball to hook when it normally wouldn't if the oil was completely fresh. So that, that way of breaking it down helps it a lot and helps you have more miss room, which is great because then you're automatically gonna have that hook to the right whenever you miss to the right uh, because you broke it down there and then hopefully develop some hold to the left if you have teammates throwing urethane, which is a, another uh, thing that I'll get into. So urethane is definitely your friend in South Point. Uh, it always has been my friend there and I've had some success there. Uh, bowled a tat there uh, about a year ago and did really well throwing urethane really hard up the gutter. Check that vlog out right now in the corner of your screen uh, if you want to see that one. But <clears throat> that's once again a characteristic of South Point as a bowling center, so that's great. So now that we know that information, uh, we have the oil pattern that I practiced on today. And once again, I have no clue how close this might even be to the actual oil pattern for this year but it gives a nice representation of what I want to do and how I want to attack the lanes. So then uh, for game one, I threw a Seismic Desperado LE, which is a really unique ball, uh, asymmetric urethane, and I can put 500 on it. It has a super weak layout and it allows me to play right up the gutter. And that's what I did for the first game. I almost had a Dutch 200. I had a clean 198. And the reason for that was just because I couldn't double. I would throw a bad shot and get nine or eight 
but it was a clean game, and that's really important because clean games are huge uh, at the Open Championships. So then for the second game, uh, I decided to go to the Rubicon UC3 Roto Grip Ball. And this ball is still urethane. It's asymmetric as well, so they're both uh, asymmetric so far that I've thrown so far. And it looked really, really good. Uh, playing the track area and just sending it right. Because of where I broke down with my Venom Shock in practice, <clears throat> I was able to develop a spot where I could throw the ball down lane and get it to hook back, especially with how much the Rubicon UC3 actually hooks. I was very happy with that. Um, I ended up only shooting a 206 because I had an open in there, <clears throat> but I did start front three spare double, and I thought that was really, really good. Even had a split conversion of the 4710 in there, uh, and then left a 210 and almost made it, but, but whiffed it. The last game, uh, I switched to the Zen Master because typically I try, and, and lately I've been trying to go to shinier equipment as I break down the lanes with urethane and create that carry down just because it creates more of a consistent motion where it gets that down lane motion that you're looking for uh, whenever there's carry down and it still gives you a little bit of hold and doesn't react too violently if you throw something that's you know like a, a shiny solid like what I did uh, with my Zen Master which I keep at 4000 grit whenever I bowl and so it's really really nice to have that option in my bag uh, so that's the third ball that I threw today and then after that, I just kind of experimented. Um, I shot a high 180 with the Zen Master. Uh, I had two opens in there that were really bad shots. That's still about a five, uh, 580 series, high 580s. Um, and I'm okay with that here at practice because I'm understanding and just working on breaking down the lane and then where to play and kind of how that I want to strategize this year. Um, and I'm conveying this to my teammates, you know, my mom, Sherry. Shout out to her for putting everything together for uh, two teams to be able to go this year from Texas, uh, and I'm a part of one of them. And, uh, you know, I, I've conveyed this information to her, and I will be conveying it some more to, to kind of help um, because she doesn't have the opportunity to practice on, like, this pattern that I am. And so it's, it's just really nice to be able to convey that information and use that to our advantage as much as possible, even though we don't know what the actual lanes might play like out there. Um, but it's nice to have a game plan in mind. So with that, I tried the High Road Pearl and the Zen, um, but my issues with those, the High Road Pearl was a little too clean, and so it, it left a 2-8 early on in the, in the fourth game, and I just, I was struggling with getting it to corner a lot. It was a little too clean, um, but the Zen was okay. Um, the Zen is definitely more mid lane read, and it has the same cores as Zen Master, so they play well off of each other. Uh, especially since I keep the Zen at the box surface and then the Zen Master at 4,000. So it's really nice to transition between the two. Um, but still wasn't quite what I was looking for. Looking back on it, could have stuck with the Zen Master and maybe sped it up a little bit or just moved a little bit more left instead of just straight up changing balls. Um, but I do think that I read the lanes very well today uh, as far as going from one ball to the next, from the Desperado LE to the UC3 to the Zen Master. And so then to kind of complete my arsenal for team, we have the Venom Shock to break down the lanes. Uh, I have the Seismic Desperado LE to play really straight up the gutter with a lot of surface. And then I have the Rubicon UC3. That's still that urethane ball, asymmetric, and allows me to shape the lane a little bit. Doesn't have as much surface on it. And then a Zen Master at 4,000 grit. So that's great. And then uh, also my uh, Zen. We'll go with that one for team. Uh, just because I know that the Hyrule Pro might be a little too clean for the team event, but that Zen definitely will be enough mid lane read to get it to pick up and blend out the lane a little bit more, even though it's still shiny and has that nice back end. Uh, it's not going to be as clean and hockey stick motion as the Hyrule Pearl. Um, so those are my balls so far that I have set aside for the team event. Be sure to check out part two, uh, and uh, I'll go over my arsenal choices and ball choices and uh, lane play strategy for doubles and singles so be sure to check that out i leave on july 8th so wish me good luck in the comments down below and i'll see you guys soon Got my signal. i was about to say Ten. Yeah, I got it on camera too.
I'd, I'd be a little more happy. That's so cool. That's cool.